In this video, we'll get to grips with drummers on sound editing controls. The drum and cymbal sounds generated on each of Drummazon's 11 channels are tweaked using the array of knobs above the sequencer controls. From left to right we have bass drum, snare drum, low tom, mid tom, high tom, rim shot, hand clap, closed hi-hat, open hi-hat, crash cymbal and ride cymbal. Several of the controls are common to all 11 sounds, starting with level, which is primarily a volume control but also determines the amount of pattern randomization applied in the sequencer's randomized mode, as discussed in the previous video. The decay knob is also present for all channels except the hand clap, extending or shortening the amplitude envelopes of drummers on sounds. Each channel also includes a tune control, adjusting the release time of the bass and snare drum's pitch envelopes and setting the fundamental pitch of all other sounds. The fundamental pitch of the bass drum is governed by its pitch knob, while the tune decay controls on the three toms lengthen the release times of their frequency envelopes. The range of the pitch envelope for the bass drum, snare and toms, i.e. the frequency at which the sound starts before bending down to the fundamental frequency, is established with the tune depth knobs. The bass drum's attack knob accentuates its initial transient more and more as it's raised, while decay adjusts the decay time of its amplitude envelope, that is, how long the sound takes to fade away to silence. The snare drum incorporates a noise generator with a couple of controls. Snappy raises and lowers its volume, and tone adjusts the release time of its envelope. Three toms also make use of noise as an attack boosting layer, but here you get only tone controls for adjusting the noise level. The hand clap, as mentioned, doesn't include a decay parameter, instead incorporating its own reverb, the depth of which is set using the reverb knob. The two hi-hat channels, open and closed, are automatically assigned to a choke group so that the closed hat will cut the open hat short, just like the real thing, and if closed and open hats are programmed to occur at the same time, only the open hat will be heard.
Since this choking works even when the level of the closed hat is at zero, it can also be useful for shaping a solo open hat sound. Last but not least, the Rimshot, Crash Cymbal and Ride Cymbal sounds don't go beyond the basics in terms of controls, including just the common level, tune and decay knobs. Of course, all the drummers on sound shaping parameters can be MIDI controlled and automated for real-time manipulation. Rather than muting and soloing the audio outputs, the mute and solo buttons at the top of each channel block the triggering of the muted drums, so sounds that are playing when either function is activated will continue to play to completion before muting, instead of stopping dead immediately. Above the mutes and solos are the output channel selectors, which we'll return to later. The original TR909 was equipped with a CV trigger output for controlling external instruments and sequences to a very limited extent. The signal used to do this was an 18 millisecond click, playing the same sequence as the rim shot, that was actually quite effective as a percussion sound. Drummazon lets you activate the trigger out sound in the output page of the options screen, assign it to any channel for triggering, and route it to any of the plugin's 12 audio outputs. Download over 30 exclusive plugins. Get hundreds of pro quality samples and power up your production skills with in depth tutorials. We break it down for you step by step, and you'll see exactly how it's done in expert video guides and producer masterclass sessions with pro producers. Get all this and more with Computer Music Magazine every month on iPad and iPhone, PC and Mac, Android, and in print. <laughs>